Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And with Boris Johnson facing his final weeks as Prime Minister, we have the prospect of getting a head of government that is not a Russian asset. Seems strange to people who pay close attention to British politics that it is partying and promoting sex fiends that has brought Johnson down when it should have been treason. It was fitting, I suppose, that in the day before he resigned, he admitted to one aspect of his treason to a group of MPs in Parliament and it barely registered in the news. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So let us quickly recap what Johnson did before I go over his remarkable admission on Wednesday. In 2018, Putin launched an attack on Britain. Not for the first time. He sent agents to assassinate his political enemies in exile in Britain. On this occasion, he used a deadly nerve agent. It was used so recklessly that it endangered the lives of ordinary British citizens in the area as well, and one police officer was badly affected. The Western world were outraged. There was international summits to discuss the response. Boris Johnson briefly attended one and then left to go to a party in Italy hosted by the son of a KGB colonel. The son was Evgeny Lebedev, whom Johnson made a lord recently despite the security services strongly advising against it. The father, Alexander Lebedev, KGB colonel. People will say former KGB colonel. There's no such thing as former KGB. And he was at the party as well. Boris Johnson gave his security detail the slip so he didn't even have people around him making sure he didn't get drunk and making sure he didn't reveal sensitive information in the presence of a Russian spy. This was reported by The Observer in 2019. At the time, we were supposed to be getting ready for the report into Russian interference in British politics being published. Boris Johnson, who was Prime Minister at the time, suppressed that report. It was months after it was completed that we got to see it. And that was only because he was double-crossed by a Tory MP. Johnson had wanted the report permanently buried and he tried to appoint people to the relevant committee to get it buried, but one Tory MP, well, basically screwed him over. He failed. The, the report was published. The report explained that the government, under Theresa May, had specifically told security services not to look for evidence of Russian interference. That way, whenever anyone asked them, they could say, we've seen no evidence. And people would assume, well, you must have looked for it. Obviously, security services would look for evidence. Oh, they haven't turned anything up. Okay, then there's no evidence. No, they'd specifically tell them not to look for it. This should be a national scandal. But the story never really took hold in the public. No, the public are outraged that Boris Johnson made them look like fools for letting loved ones die alone while he parted, which is understandable, but they don't care that he and the Tory party in general are allowing Putin to influence our elections and murder people who live amongst us. But on Wednesday, Boris Johnson admitted it. It was the liaison committee, a group of MPs who scrutinised the Prime Minister. They knew this was their last chance. Even if Johnson was deluded enough to think he'd be carrying on as Prime Minister, Johnson kept getting irritated that they weren't asking him the sort of policy questions that he thought they should. They were having none of it. Boris Johnson was not going to be Prime Minister at the next Liaison Committee hearing. So they had this one last chance to get answers from him. As part of the questioning, Johnson admitted to attending meetings with Alexander Lebedev, a KGB spy who had carried out spying activities in Britain during the Cold War without his officials. In fact, he seemed to admit having so many meetings with him that he couldn't be sure of the key details. When the, the, the I'm sorry, I forget who asked the question, but when the question was put to him, you know, why can't you remember this? He was trying to suggest that this happened so often that he couldn't remember individual details. After a series of frankly careless admissions, an official sat behind him, wrote something on a piece of paper and passed it to him. And it, when you saw it on the camera, it said, stop talking. They could see that he was implicating himself badly, even if Johnson didn't see the danger. For the life of me, I have no idea why Johnson didn't just say he couldn't remember. Doesn't matter how persistent the question was. I mean, he does it often enough. Just say you don't remember. You don't remember what they're going to do about it. When it comes to getting drunk in front of a Russian spy as either foreign secretary or even prime minister, it is better to look evasive than to admit it all. 
If we had a functioning media, the Daily Express would not be thanking Johnson for his service and the Daily Mail would not be accusing the Tories of losing their mind for getting rid of him. They would be savaging the traitor in number 10. At one point, Johnson was asked if he'd informed officials at least about the meeting afterwards. He said he probably did. There does not seem to be any record to back this up. So at a time of Russian attack on British soil, the British Foreign Secretary of the time got drunk without any officials with him in the presence of a KGB officer and we have no idea what he was asked or how he responded. And I'm going to show you how Yvette Cooper, the Shadow Foreign Secretary, uh, sorry, Shadow Home Secretary, sorry, uh, brought this up in Parliament this week. I'm not going to pick out a key clip and discuss some things she said. Every word was carefully chosen, incredibly important. So I don't want to leave anything out. So I'm just going to present it here. I would listen to it all. Thank you, Mr Speaker. We've sought this UQ despite the meltdown in the government because it goes to the heart of our national security. Yes. Yesterday, the Prime Minister admitted to the Home Affairs and Public Accounts Committee chairs that in April 2018, as Foreign Secretary, he met with the former KGB officer Alexander Lebedev, father of Lord Lebedev, in Italy without any officials, yep. without any security. He went there straight from a NATO meeting where the top item on the agenda was Russia. At the height of the Salisbury poisoning crisis, after Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia had been attacked, and before Charlie Rowley and Dawn Sturgis had been exposed to the remaining Novichek. This was a chemical weapon attack by Russian agents on British soil that targeted two British residents, had life-changing effects for a British police officer, and killed a British citizen. Mm -hmm. On the 20th of May this year, Alexander Lebedev was sanctioned by the Canadian government, a Five Eyes partner of the UK, for being one of the 14 identified people who have directly enabled Vladimir Putin's senseless war in Ukraine and bear responsibility for the pain and suffering of the people of Ukraine. The UK has not yet sanctioned him. The charges against the Prime Minister are not just about lack of integrity, they are about complete disregard for basic national security and the patriotic interests of this country. Yes. And those charges lie not just with the Prime Minister, but with all of those who have enabled him and covered up for him on this issue. Yes. So, did the Foreign Office, the Home Office and the Security Service know about this meeting in advance? Was a detailed record made after the event uh, of the meeting? Because there are rumours that the Foreign Secretary was too drunk to properly remember. Is that true? Yeah. There are also rumours that Alexander Lebedev was trying to arrange a phone call from the meeting with the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov. Is that true? Did that phone call happen? The record of Minister's interest says the Foreign Secretary accepted hospitality in Italy for himself and a guest, but he travelled home alone. Who was that guest and did that put him in a compromising position? Oh. The Prime Minister referred yesterday to several meetings with Alexander Lebedev without officials. When were the others? Were any of them while he was Prime Minister? And the Shadow Security Minister has been asking for confirmation that this meeting happened for months. Oh. So why have Home Office Ministers, Cabinet Office Ministers and Foreign Office Ministers all been covering up? It is yeah. bad enough covering up for parties and breaking the law, but covering up over national security is a total disgrace. It puts all our safety and security at risk. It's not just the Prime Minister, it is the whole government that is letting the country down. Now, I do not see how anyone can listen to that and not demand answers. And it tells you everything you need to know about our media. That aside from a couple of exceptions, this was not reported with any prominence in our mainstream media. The Daily Mail had the nerve to say that Moscow would be cheering the resignation of Boris Johnson. This is a contemptible lie and they know it. Johnson, like Trump, was a Putin chess piece in his game of ambition. So if anyone does want to see Jensen, Johnson's end as hopeful, I can't tell you that Brexit will get any better until uh, his, his government is brought down, not just his, but the Tory government. You know, the whole thing needs to be replaced. Um, I can't tell you that people struggling with the cost of living will be helped by a different prime minister. I can't tell you that our underfunded public services will get more attention. They won't. I can't even tell you that the nasty, divisive culture wars will wind down. They won't. I don't think Johnson's replacement will be fundamentally different in approach. 
But although we know that the Tory party is in the pay of Russian donors with close links to the Kremlin, we may at least get a prime minister who is not personally a Russian asset. Someone who might not sell them state secrets for a glass of bubbly and a lap dance. But it is still an outrage that Johnson's treachery will probably not be seriously investigated for some time to come. Maybe not ever. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.